welcome back for Farming with Family. It's my favorite time of harvest, which is corn harvest. So we just got this field opened up on Friday. So now we're gonna get back at it. It's, um, it's plenty dry, test weight's good, so it's ready to go. I haven't cleaned my window for you, so you can see back there. Um, the agronomist I work with, he's gonna come out, we're gonna take some samples, um, see how this stuff is yielding, because half the field I sprayed, uh, I put Delaro, which is a fungicide, and I think there is like a certain kind of fertilizer that I put on there. Um, so he's gonna come out, we sprayed part of the field with it, part of the field we didn't spray with it. So we're just gonna see if it makes a difference, if it works to perfectly justify putting it on all my stuff next year, we'll have to see. But, so we'll get a little video of that, but we're gonna get started. check things out. I smelled something getting hot and here I found out this belt that drives a feeder house was starting to slip. Um, it's getting worn so I did order one from John Deere. I'll get one of those later today um, but it looks like I might have been over greasing it a little bit too much because there is kind of grease residue on the on the belt which that'll make them slip too. It was kind of loose in the process so we did tighten it up a little bit and it seems to not be getting so hot anymore. Um, so just little things to, to check here and there, but it seems like it's doing okay. We're gonna, we got some belt dressing. We're gonna try to clean it up with that um, so we can change the belt later just before it breaks or whatever. But we're gonna open up the rock trap. Cause stuff gets in there and you just wanna have that open in case you do get any rocks that can just drop into this little trap door here. Then we can open this up and let them out so they don't go through the combine. Well, another dump, another full grain cart, another full semi. I still got my little truck if I need room, but Matt's driving truck for me right now. And Sarah's uncle David is on his way here currently. Um, and then my brother will get here tonight. So if we can go tomorrow, there's a chance of rain. We'll see what happens. Um, but if we can go tomorrow, I'll have my brother to drive grain cart or combine and Sarah's uncle to drive semi. So with Matt driving semi, I haven't had a wait yet, but getting closer to it. So we're going to keep on plugging away.
So this is a reason why it's nice to have a grand car driver. So on my last round, I went down and I came back. And by the time I got about a third of the way back to the field, I was full. If I would have, have a grain car driver, they could have came and met me and I could have dumped right there and kept driving. But instead I had to drive back about two thirds of the length of the field empty just to dump what I had on. So tomorrow, um, either my brother or I will be driving grain cart. And then we just, the more you keep the combine going and processing corn, the faster you can get done. So that's that's the benefit of having a grain cart. It it is a little bit more storage. I know my grain cart's pretty pretty small compared to a lot of them. Uh, mine holds about 350 bushels, and a lot of them hold like 800 to a thousand. That's like on the smaller side even. So, but mine holds a holds a dump from the combine plus a little bit more, and that's that's part of it. So that's the that's the whole reason behind having having a grain cart is it just keeps you keeps you going keeps the combine going instead of having to stop and drive back empty so there's your little educational fun fact about why it's nice to have a grain cart this is my first year having one i found the one i got for a pretty good deal and so far it's definitely came in handy with beans when uh, sarah's uncle was driving truck uh, i would fill up the grain cart and my combine right about by the time he got back. Otherwise, I would have had to sit and wait for uh, probably 20, 30 minutes each load just for how long it took him to get to the elevator and back. So that's, it's really helped save a lot of time and um, just getting a little bit more efficient. You wanna see what a full load looks like? Got a little cat corn. And it's always nice to see the truck driver when he gets back. Well, we're to that point that even Big Blue is getting uh, getting loaded up. Actually, now it's more like Little Blue. This used to be our biggest truck for a lot of years until my dad bought the semi that I use now. So this holds about 500 bushel-ish, where the semi holds a thousand easy. Legally, you get about oh, 1,100 on there almost. So, gotta put the grain where you got room. David just back at it another day. I'm loading again. Just working on getting this field opened up got one I think two more sides to to do it's kind of an l-shaped field so there's a lot of sides to get open my brother Caleb's here he's running the grain cart for me and David's in the semis so we had a little bit of a little bit of snow mist sleet stuff last night so we had to quit a little early but it's all dried off today it's nice 55 out so we're just back going at it get it opened up so we can drive straight back and forth hopefully but everything's running good well we might be waiting at battle they started uh, at the elevator they started making a pile outside and you got to drive across a conveyor and it unloads it a lot slower so David Collins said there is like six trucks in front of him and so we're using the blue truck again uh, Caleb's gonna make a round with me then he can start running combine because he doesn't know how to drive the semi so I'll drive semi and we'll see if that helps with two semi drivers and I'll switch in and out of the grain cart so just try to keep it going as fast as we can this truck holds about 450 bushel I got Caleb running the combine now. So I'll actually get an outside shot so you can see what it looks and sounds like from the outside perspective. Made around with him and showed him the 
different stuff about it. He's probably co combined more acres in his life than I have in mine, so just get a little refresher. So when I drive, I go about four miles an hour, but now that we're gonna be, we might be waiting on trucks, uh, since the line's longer in town, um, and Caleb's getting used to it, so he's driving about three and a half, so. It's fast enough, it's yielding pretty decent, so. Now I get to run grain cart for a little while, that'll be fun. Got the other truck back. I'll get this filled up, take the blue truck back to the farm. We'll put that in the in the bin later tonight once the elevator closes. I might have Caleb open up a strip in the middle because he wasn't quite full and I could have loaded him on the go but I can't do it when he's going that way because the auger is on this side. So I might just tell him to pick an end row and then cut the field in half. Unloading. Another load. Old machinery making new money. I don't think anything that we're using today besides the pickups was made after 2000. So just goes to show you don't have to have the new fancy stuff to get things done. I mean, sure my combine doesn't have a refrigerator in the buddy seat, but I think I'll survive. And one thing it doesn't have is a payment. New stuff, you generally have payments. Gotta get your cardio in. Drop the truck off over there. Well, I took the blue truck home, brought David's truck back, running down to get the grain cart, and empty that before Caleb gets to the end, and keep going. Don't need a gym membership. Okay, we're gonna try to do a little multitasking. We're gonna dump on the go.
spaceship. I didn't make it back on time to dump them on the go. So we'll just dump them here at the end of the field. today we got about 20 acres in this field and then our last field is about 70 ish acres so but that one's right across the road from the house so right on the main road easy to get to town um so yeah we'll see how many acres we can get knocked out today we got a much early earlier start today since we didn't have to wait for the rain and sleet stuff to uh, evaporate away so we're gonna get started for today well if you want to know my least favorite job about harvesting it's greasing. I hate greasing. It's nasty. You get messy. But it's cheap preventative maintenance. Have a, have a lot of bearings. I don't go out if you grease it regularly. So less breakdowns, less downtime, less work. So gotta grease. Greasing is much easier now that we have a electric grease gun. Before we always had the hand crank ones and your hand would be about shot by the time you're half done greasing. So this goes much faster. Alright, let's get started for the day. Caleb had that build last night. Put that on my truck. All of the grain cards is nice and full. Then we'll have then we'll have over half a semi, so pretty soon we'll get that one going down. Unloading again. Another day, another load.
stuff over here. This uh, this part of the field, there used to be a fence line right up there, and this used to be alfalfa. And up by that rock pile right over there, we broke up about 10 acres of pasture a couple of years ago. But since we've gotten over into this part, it's been yielding a lot better. And you can just tell there's a lot more corn stalk trash on the ground. And the plants are taller, the cobs are bigger. Caleb said he can only drive like three miles an hour now, where before I was driving like four. And this part of the field is probably only a quarter mile long. And he can only do like two and a half, like, like a round and a half basically, and then he's full. So it's yielding really nice over here. It's a little bit lower, but just out a little bit better ground. Hey boss, what's for lunch? What? What's for lunch? Calzones. Ooh, where from? Drake's. Drake's place? Good stuff. Very good food. They keep us full. Oh yeah. Nothing like a hot field lunch. Another load going to town. Oh, there goes a the neighbor. Alright, last eight rows of this field. It came out evenly. There is no one rows of shame. That's where you have an odd number of rows and you can't get it all in the last combine pass. So we call it the row of shame. Because somebody didn't pick out the, the end row properly, but not this time. Caleb did good. I switched with him so he could eat his lunch. And now we're going to go and load this. Head down to my place and start on the last field. I don't think we're going to finish today because this last part ended up yielding a lot better than we thought it would. Um, so more truck pulls just took more time, but that's just fine with me. So we'll get this on the truck, send that one to town. It'll be a little over half a load probably. Um, and then we will get stuff moved down to my place and get that field opened up. Hey buddy! officially done with harvest. I actually wasn't there for the last part of it. My brother and David finished it up because I was just not feeling up to par to operate a tractor. So I went in and rested, but they got it all done. Everything turned out well. Are you eating candy? Oh. And so now we're gonna get on to working on some of our fall tillage and some fall project that we haven't been, that we've been putting off. So we'll go get started on that. Okay, you go. So that's where I'm going to end the video. Thanks for watching.